So Pascal's theorem. Pascal's theorem. Uh, I will I will prove the result in the special case, in the special case of a circle. So not a general conic section, because we don't have at the moment methods to handle general conic sections. So I shall do it in the case of a circle. And I will I will leave it as an open question why it will be sufficient to do it for a circle. But that will, as I say, I shall come back to the subject. So the proof. Sufficient. <laughs> to prove for a circle. And uh, let's 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 note the open question why. I shall this question will be fully answered later. And in fact, it's not too difficult if you think a little bit about it, uh, a little bit about the question what exactly is a conic section. So it's <coughs> a conic section is really obtained by taking a cone and intersecting it with a plane. So as far as a theorem like this is concerned, in which you've got all the incidence properties, it really doesn't matter what kind of an intersection you make. Okay, so you intersect and obtain a circle, you intersect and obtain an ellipse, you intersect and obtain a hyperbola or a parabola. Well, if it works for one case, which is the circle, then it would work for all others. So that's, that would be one good way of looking at it and very good way of, very good way of introducing the light motive of projective geometry yet again. Okay, anyhow, so let me do it for the circle. Uh, so instead of the conic section, I'm taking a, I'm taking a circle. Okay, and I'm taking, uh, here is the point A, uh, B, C, okay, and let's say A prime, uh, B prime, and uh, let's say C prime. Okay, so the usual picture, B prime C, B, C prime, they intersect in X, C, A prime, C prime, A, they intersect in Y, and A prime, B, and A, B prime, they intersect in Z. Okay, so, well, here we are, here we are your points X, Y, and Z, and why they should be on a straight line. Well, I shall make use of the, I shall make use of the theorem of Menelaus. And uh, if you will, if you will, if you will throw your mind back, and if you remember how I did it, of course, the dilemma with the Menelaus theorem was that, I mean, if you want to use the Menelaus theorem, in connection with three points like this, then there must be a triangle somewhere. There must be a triangle somewhere uh, so, that, so that these points are on the respective sides so that you can sort of start uh, working with the, uh, with the Menelaus theorem. Okay, so, well, you will remember how we did it in the case of the Pappus theorem. We looked at the point in which, in which CB prime and BA prime intersect. Okay, so let's say these intersect in a point, so let me, uh, okay, so these intersect in a point, so let me call it V, and let me also make use of these points, these points, okay, so this is U, 
and W. Okay, just as in the case of the Pappus theorem, so I shall be making use of this triangle U V W. Okay, and uh, well, here here are our interesting points. That's Z. That's Y, and that's X. Okay. So I shall, I shall do that. Now, in connection with, okay, so I apply Menelaus, Menelaus in the triangle, in the triangle U, V, W. Well, of course, you shall have to also look at these straight lines. So let me, let me, okay, let me, for instance, tell you, let me show you, for instance, one interesting straight line. For instance, we can look at the straight line BC prime. I, sh I shall look at other straight lines, but I, I, would like to, I would like to color this for purpose of illustration. Okay, so, so what happens if I work with the straight line BC prime and apply the theorem of Menelaus in the triangle UVW? Okay, so, so, so I start with X. So I have got x v divided by x w, x v x w, and then uh, and then let me see, and then let me see b uh, uh, no uh, c prime w c prime u of course, and finally of course b u, b, v. Okay, so this gives you plus one. It's very nice, and this is of course a quantity which we shall need. And now next thing, let's work with, let's work with uh, C, A prime. Now actually that I can go blindfold, really. I will just replace everything cyclically, so x replaced by y, y replaced by z. U, V, W replaced by V, W, U. Okay, so X is replaced by, okay, so, well, uh, yeah, Y. V is replaced by W. So I've chosen my notation carefully, so I can, I can now really move blindfold. C prime is replaced by A prime, and W is replaced by, okay, so there it is. Uh, so let's stop and check, for instance, is that, is that really true? That's A prime, okay, so I'm working with the line C A prime, okay, Y W Y U times A prime, okay, that's, that's perfect. In fact, okay, so C V divided by C W, that is equal to plus one. Finally, okay, okay, so let me go on to the next line, which is, of course, A B prime. Okay, now that's, Y is replaced by Z, W is replaced by U, and Y is replaced by Z, U is replaced by V, times A prime, B prime, V, A prime, B prime, W, C is replaced by A, W, A, U. Now that is again plus one. Right. Now in the theorem of in, when, when we were trying to prove the Pappus theorem, I augmented these three equations by two further equations obtained again using the theorem of Menelaus. But you see, in that case, instead of the circle, I had two straight lines and I could use the Menelaus theorem, but now I can't use Menelaus theorem. So what am I to do? Well, let's multiply everything. So these three, is the unknown quantity. And then, and then, and then, if you look at, for instance, if you look at, for instance, the following quantities, let's look at the power of the point U with respect to the circle. It can be expressed as UA times UC prime or it can be expressed as U B times U A prime. So, so for power of 
u will give me u a times u c prime equals u b times u a prime. Now, çocuklar bakın, u b written backwards. Huh? Well, that, that's, that, that does not seem to, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, just a minute. Okay, uh, so why does it this work? U B times ah yeah okay so U B times U A prime. Let's look at these. Let me call this one, one. So if you multiply these two, they will be the same as U A times U C prime. Well, U A. U C prime. So that's one, one, and one. So these objects cancel one another. Okay? U prime B, U prime e, e, U B, U A prime is exactly the same as U A U C prime. So these cancel out to give you one. If you look at the power of V. With respect to the same circle, you will see that V A prime times V B. Okay, so let me write it like this. Uh, you can do it again blindfold. V C times V B prime. Now let's see. Okay, V A prime V B, V C V B prime. Well, that too, for instance. Now let's look at that. Uh, VB prime times VC. So let me call these things two. Two. Well, VB times downstairs VA prime. Well, these cancel out because they, they are two different expressions for the same number the power of V with respect to the circle. Finally, if you look at the power of W, the power of W, W with respect to the circle is or can be written in many different ways. V, B prime, V, C, or V, C prime, V, A. W, I'm sorry. So it's W, C, W, B prime is equal to W, A, W, C prime. Okay, so now look at it. It's again written, the, it's in the wrong direction. So it is WC, so that's 3, WA, WC prime times WA, that's the 3, third quantity. That's the same as WC, third quantity, times WB prime. Okay, there we are. So, if you multiply these three equations, everything else here will cancel out will cancel out because, in fact, this, this, this will give rise to a fraction in which the numerator and denominator are two different, two different expressions for the product of the three, the powers of the three points u, v, w with respect to the same circle. So this will leave us with this object. This is equal to one. So use Menelaus. Again, again in the same triangle in this theorem of Menelaus. Good. Thank you. So I, so I think this is, this is a good place to stop here. This is a good place to stop for today. But I would like to make a small, I would like to make a few remarks. A few remarks. Uh, so, the remarkable resemblance between the theorem of Pappus and the theorem of uh, Pascal 
so I've already talked about why I can do this for the circle, and in fact, I shall that that will be tr that will you, we shall give a treatment uh, of it, full treatment why circle is sufficient. And uh, there is still one thing. There is still one thing that remains. Why is why is the Pappus theorem a special case? I mean, how can you how can you take a conic section and treat it as if it were two lines? The idea is simple. Actually, in, I, have, I have drawn in this picture an ellipse, so that was a little misleading. But imagine your conic section is a hyperbola. Huh? Hyperbola. And you have got this theorem. So you've got three points, three points, okay, and you have got the theorem of Pascal. How can I understand the hyperbola as two lines? Well, I mean, I'm not going to do it, of course. I'm not going to give you a perfect proof, perfect justification. But sufficient heuristic is the following. If you look at a hyperbola, so it's it's a, it's a it's a curve it's a curve with two special lines two asymptotes okay if you look at it from far away it becomes a curve which is very much like straight lines but okay so so if you if so it's, it becomes something like this if you look at it from a great distance. And if you look at it from very far away, it really becomes impossible to distinguish a hyperbola from two straight lines. Okay? So that is that is why, that is why, instead of a, when, when you talk about a conic section, if you think about a hyperbola and if you think about two lines, okay, so in the Popper's theorem you have these two two lines, okay? So I want you to imagine that these two lines, okay, intersecting somewhere, are in fact a very extreme hyperbola. It's a very, so it's just two, two straight lines you can understand as a very extreme hyperbola, as a hyperbola which you are observing from, very, from a very great distance, okay? So that's why. That's why you can smoothly pass from Pascal's theorem, which concerns conic sections, to two straight lines. Of course, the mystery that still stays is how can you prove this theorem, which is about conic sections in general. So it's valid for ellipse, for parabola, for hyperbola. Why is it that this can be, it, it will be sufficient to prove it for a circle? Well, as I said, there is a simple justification, and I'm going to give you an elaborate justification towards the end of the term, and it will justify everything, and it will also be yet another introduction to our, our projective geometry, this new geometry.